Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you a handy little thing you can use to find studs in a wall. So this might be useful if you want to put up some shelving or you want to hang a TV or something heavy on the wall and you want to screw into the actual wooden studs going down the wall rather than just screwing into the plasterboard. Now this isn't going to apply to all houses because obviously houses of different ages have different construction. But give it a go because you might find that it's an easy way to locate the studs on your ceilings and walls. So I'm going to show you it working on the walls. I'm also going to show you it working on the ceilings as well. Because on the ceilings you might want to hang a heavy light fitting and you want to screw into the actual joists going across. Or you might be putting spotlights up and you might, for example, be putting eight spotlights in this room here. You're not sure where the joists are running and you don't want to end up drilling a big hole and fitting a spotlight where there's a joist because you need to have that free airspace around each spotlight so you don't set the joists on fire. So first of all you need to work out is your wall a stud wall or is it a solid wall. So if you listen to this one here, I know by the sound of it that this is a solid wall. So this is made out of breeze block, but yet if I go here this is also a solid wall, but on this one here this is a dry wall. So have a listen. You can hear it's much more hollow than this wall here. So you will tell just by knocking at it when you come to a hollow wall. Now the technique I'm going to show you in this video, I'm going to do a few rooms and ceilings in this house and then I'm going to go to an old house with lava and plaster ceilings to see if it works in that house there. But first of all, let's just do the knocking technique. Generally by knocking you can kind of roughly tell where the studs are. So if you have a listen. Right, it sounds different here. So that sounds like a stud. Then it will start to go hollow. So now it sounds hollow. And now it sounds like there's a stud here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a magnet. If you were to just try a fridge magnet, chances are it's not going to work because these are not very powerful at all. But if you get yourself a neodymium magnet, then these are really powerful, but they are also very dangerous. So there's these magnets here. Basically, they're uh, rare earth magnets. They're permanent magnets, so you don't have to magnetize them. They're just always magnetic. They're relatively cheap, considering how good they are, but they are dangerous. You can get them at all different sizes. The bigger they are, the more powerful they are. But even these little small ones here, you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them stuck together. They are very, very, very strong. Now, if children were to swallow these, it can kill them because what can happen is they can swallow one and then if they were to swallow another one an hour later, in your bowel, they can end up pulling together and they can rip through the bowel. Do not leave these lying around. They're really dangerous. Please take a moment out now to pause the video and read this here. But they are very useful to have around the house. For example, the times I've used these is one time their car keys dropped down a drain and then all I did was sellotape these onto an end of a pole, fished around in the drain with a pole and the key stuck to it. I found them in about 10 or 15 seconds. They absolutely stunk but I still found them. So let's go ahead now and see if we can use this magnet here on this wall here. So what I'm going to do is rather than just rubbing this all over the wall because it can leave marks, I'm just going to wrap it in a little bit of tissue paper or this is kitchen roll here. So I'm just going to wrap it there and I'm just going to randomly put it around the wall. So let me just knock to begin with just to see where I think the studs are. So it sounds to me as if there's a stud here. So I'm just going to use this now and nice and gently, I'm not using a lot of force, I'm just, here we go, I've got one already. There you go, you can see now it's stuck to it here. So we need to make sure that that is an actual stud going down the wall. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the magnet in a kind of zigzag up and down the wall just to see if we can find another one. There we go, I've got another one there. There we go, and I've got another one there. So now I know that there definitely is a stud moving down here. So let me just move along now and see if I can find another one. So let's do the knocking technique. There, it sounds different here. Hollow, and now solid, and now hollow. So let's move along here. 
There we go, I've got one here. Now just to show you why you need these rare earth magnets, these neodymium ones, rather than a fridge magnet, if I get this, this lovely Ibiza fridge magnet here, you will see that it just doesn't stick. So even if I put it straight on the wall, there's just nothing there at all. It's just not strong enough. Okay, so that's why you have to use these magnets because they're so strong. And then what you can do is you can just get some post-it notes and every time you find one, you can just mark it on the wall. So I'm gonna put the camera on a tripod now and I'm just gonna mark out the wall. So as you can see now, I've put little post-it notes every time that I've located a screw using the magnet, and you can clearly see that there's a straight line going up here. And also you can clearly see there's a straight line going up here. Yep, yeah, so I know now that this is the stud going up there, and there's also a stud going down here. And as you can see, there's been no damage or anything. I haven't had to poke any holes or anything like that. I've just used post-it notes. Obviously you can use decorators tape or something like that. But that just gives you an idea then. Obviously I can go along here, mark out the studs. It doesn't take that long when you get used to it. And if you use the kitchen roll on it, you're not gonna damage the surface, like the wallpaper or the paint. You can use like big sweeps. And if you see it, it really is strong. When you start to get near it, it really will suck it into it. You can see there. Okay, now, this wall has been built relatively recently, so it's used screws, and that's the reason the magnets are sticking to it. But in the rest of the house, on the ceilings, this house is 40 years old, and at the time, they just used nails. And unfortunately, the nails will not stick to the magnets. If you have a look here, I've got a little bit here that's popped, which is the problem with using nails, is that they can blow through the plaster over the time. And if you have a look here, it's not sticking to that. But we will try the house later on with the lava and plaster ceiling, and hopefully these magnets will be strong enough to stick to the little pin heads, the little nail heads, every time that the lava went over the joist. So let me just show you a couple of other bits now. Right, we're in the kitchen ceiling now. Again, this is a relatively new ceiling, so this has got fresh plasterboard on with the screws. I know that this is screwed because it was only done a few years ago. Again, way to find it is just to knock. And then when you hear the sound difference, that sounds more solid. And then we've gone to hollow. You can hear there that that sounds hollow. And here it sounds solid. So I've started by just moving along here. I've already found one. You can see the magnet stuck to it here. So I'm just gonna mark that here. Now I'm just gonna go along that line now and see if I can find anything else. Again, I've got one at the edge there. Another one there. Got another one there. So you get the idea, I don't have to keep going across. And now if you have a look up, you can see that we've got a nice straight line across here. So we now know with almost 100% certainty that we have a joist going all the way along here. So if we wanted to screw something heavy into there, we can safely say that if we screw into this bit here, we're gonna hit the wood off the joist. Also, if you're putting your down lights on, you can now see that we wouldn't wanna be drilling the hole there. I mean, it's already close enough, but you wouldn't want that any closer to the wood. So you now know that you have to put one either side of that joist. So if we go up, we should be able to find another joist now by knocking. So we've got this in here, it should sound solid. Yeah, and now it should go hollow. There, can you hear the sound difference? So keep going. Still sounds hollow. There, sounds different here. So 
it sounds solid again here. So let's put the magnet along this line here. There we go, and now we've got another joist here. So now we know that we've got a joist going across here, and you can see now we're gonna have another joist going across here. But again, you would move the magnet along to find the other screws to make sure that you were definitely happy that that is where the joist was. So that's a stud wall and also a ceiling taken care of. Let's go to an older house now with lava and plaster just to see if the magnet's strong enough to pick up those tiny little nails that was used to hit the lava and plaster in. Now, when it comes to the other ceilings in the house, because like I said earlier, these are all done with nails, then I'm not gonna be able to find them in here. I would have to use either the knocking technique and listen to where it gets hollow and solid, or this instance here probably would be good to use a stud finder. Right, let's go to the old house now. Okay, so we're in this old house here now with lava and plaster ceilings and lava and plaster walls. And unfortunately, the magnets that I have are not strong enough to pick anything up. I thought that it might be able to pick up the heads of the nails on the laves, but it's not. So basically, on a lava and plaster wall, what happens is you have the main studs going down the wall, and then you have laves, which are basically kind of wonky, small bits of wood going across here and they're nailed onto the main studs and then you've got thick plaster going on top of that so realistically those nails are going to be about this far behind the plaster here it might work if i had a stronger magnet but it's not picking up anything at all i've gone all the way across it and it's not picking anything up so i've done the same with the ceiling as well because the same principle on the walls as it is on the ceiling and it's still not it's not picking anything up at all so you have to either use uh, electronic stud finder or tried and tested method of knocking until you can hear it so you hear there it sounds hollow and that sounds solid so there's probably a joist here and roughly speaking you're going to be looking at around 14 inches but remember it can vary from center off the stud to center off the stud so 14 inches would be about around here so it sounds hollow here and now it sounds like there's a stud there. Hollow. Hollow. So it sounds like there's a stud there as well. So you can use that way of knocking to sort of guesstimate where the studs are. But unfortunately the magnet technique, although it does work well when it comes to a newer built house, unfortunately on these older houses, it doesn't work for me. Now other things to watch out for are obviously light fittings and also your electric plugs as well. Because remember in the walls you can have all your electric cables, you could have copper heating pipes, you could have plastic heating pipes as well. But if you look here now, don't get this mistaken. So right now, as you can see, it's sticking to here and you might think, oh, I've got a stud here, but it's not. In this instance, what this is going to be is I've got a, a light switch here and there's going to be a metal conduit going up here up to the ceiling up there. So basically you need to use common sense with this as well. Don't just think, oh, because the magnet's sticking to it, it must be screws or nails in a lava and plaster wall. If it's right by a light switch, then you know that it's gonna be some kind of metal conduit or it also could be metal capping protecting the cables below it. So when it comes to drilling into a wall, never ever ever drill above or below or to the left or right of a light switch and also when it comes to a plug socket as well never ever drill above or below or to the left or right of a plug socket because generally speaking that's where the cables will go they will go down up left or right so stay away from those areas there so here for example a safe place to drill would probably be this location here or obviously up here you know so I'm away because it's you see I'm away from the vertical line from the plug socket, so it would probably be okay to do something here. But this isn't gonna let you know if there's any copper pipes or plastic pipes or anything hidden in there. So, you know, you can still be unlucky. You can do all the checks and you can still be unlucky. That's why things like a electric stud finder is good because that will also find electric cables 
and pipes as well. The only problem is, unless you're really good at using them, it can be very confusing. So, you know, the video, sometimes these magnets work really well, other times they don't work at all. If you live in a newer built house, then these really do work well. If you live in an older house, then really they don't work at all. But I hope you found the video useful. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.